closed the session for about an hour. And what follows in this second session is the recital of the mandate of the Senate, rules of the procedure, as well as matters of hearing program. That will also be followed by the introduction of members of Nairobi County Assembly, representing the County Assembly and their councils, if any. There will also be an introduction of the Governor and the Council representing Governor Mike Sunko. Charges leveled against the Governor will also be read before Senators and the County Assembly of Nairobi opening statement will be made on their behalf as well as the opening statement on behalf of Governor for about 30 minutes. The Senate will then proceed to hear the evidence by the County Assembly evidence of witnesses, if any, as well as cross-examination and re-examination re of witnesses that will be followed by matters questions and requests for clarification by senators in regards to grounds for removal of the Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko. The Governor for Nairobi County will be any minute from now be appearing before Senate to defend himself following his impeachment by MCAs. And the Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Ken Lusaka, is making his way into the chamber, signaling the beginning of that particular session. I'll now hand you over for the live workers. My name is Gladys Mungai. Enjoy your viewing.
Nairobi County just made his way into the chambers and this session the Honorable Senators will be seeking to examine as well as cross-examine evidence presented before the Senate that necessitated the impeachment of Honorable Governor for Nairobi County. You remember that the members of County Assembly impeached the Governor based on various charges, among them is gross violation of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, the County Government Act of 2012, as well as the Public Procurement and Disposal Act of 2015, and the Public Finance Management Act of 2012. Among other charges are abuse of office, abuse of office, gross misconduct, as well as crimes under the national law. Good. Person to standing orders number 30 on request by majority leader with the support of the requisite number the speaker appointed this day on Wednesday as well as Thursday 17th 2020 as the days for the special sitting for removal to investigate the proposed removal of office of Governor Mike Sonko and that has since been gazetted to necessitate the honorable members to sit between today and tomorrow to investigate those charges. According to the Gazette notice, the sitting shall be held virtually as well as members present in the chamber to prevent senators from chances of contracting COVID-19. The governor for Nairobi County will be appearing in plenary this is after the lawmakers decided again is establishing a committee comprising of 11 members only to hear the impeachment motion against the besieged governor. This was a surprising turn of events as the Senate abandoned the roots of the committee after the majority leader Samuel Pogisio withdrew the motion in the last minute. The Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Ken Lusaka, has already furnished the House with all the accusations raised against the Governor that led to the decision of 88 members of County Assembly out of 122 members of the Nairobi County Assembly who voted to send the Governor home. Among the charges read to Honorable Members is that the governor abused his office by violating Article 175 of the Constitution as read together with Section 2 of the Leadership and Integrity Act on the conduct of state officers and that the governor had consistently intimidated as well as harassed and molested officials of the county executive. This includes blackmailing his county executive. Okay, order, order members. Order members, take your seats. Take your seats. Senator, take your seats. Take your seats, honorable members. I will soon be on my feet, so take your seats so that you, you don't freeze. Okay, honorable senators, order. Honorable senators, ladies and gentlemen, having dispensed with the pre hearing meeting of senators, which was a closed door session, it's now time. Take your seat. It's now time to commence the proceedings of the proposed 
removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Michael Mbuvisongo, the governor of Nairobi uh, City County. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, by a letter reference, NCCA, stock SPK 12, 2021, dated 4th, Friday, December 2020, the Speaker of the, National, the, the, the Nairobi City County Assembly informed the Speaker of the Senate that at a sitting of the Nairobi City Council Assembly held on Thursday, 3rd December 2020, the Nairobi City County Assembly had approved a motion for the removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Michael Mbubi Songo, the Governor of Nairobi City Council. The Speaker of the County Assembly also forwarded copies of the following documents. A, the order paper of the Nairobi City County Assembly for the sitting of the County Assembly held on Thursday, 3rd December 2020. B, a notice of motion by Honorable Michael Kumo Kada, MCA, dated 25th December, November 2020, on the proposal, proposed removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Michael Mbuvi Songo, the Governor of Nairobi City County. C, a list of names and signatures of members of the Nairobi City County Assembly in support of the removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Michael Mbuvi Songo, the Governor of Nairobi City County. And D, the votes and proceedings of the sitting of the Nairobi City County Assembly held on Thursday, 3rd, December 2020. Take your seats. <laughs> Take your seats, <coughs> <coughs> Senator M Manga. <coughs> Take your seats. Senator Maina, take your seat. I was on my feet, please. No, seat, sir, because I <laughs> Okay, order. Pass one to section 33A of the County Governments Act 2012 and Standing Orders 75 1A of the Senate Standing Orders on Wednesday 9th, December 2020 a special sitting of the Senate to hear the charges against the governor of Nairobi City County was held. Thereafter, on the request of the Senate Majority Leader and with the support of the requisite number of senators, I appointed today, Wednesday 16th and tomorrow, Thursday 17th, December 2020, as days for special sitting of the Senate to investigate in plenary the matters of the proposed removal from office by impeachment of Honorable Michael Mbuvi Songo, the governor of Nairobi City County. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to remind you of the mandate of the Senate insofar as it relates to the removal of a governor from office as provided for under Article 181 of the Constitution as read together with Section 33 of the County Government Act 2012 and Standing Order 75 of the Senate Standing Orders. In particular, Article 181 of the Constitution provides as follows. A. One, a county governor may be removed from office on any of the following grounds. A gross violation of the Constitution or any other law, B, where there are serious reasons for believing that the county governor has committed a crime under national or international law, C, abuse of office or gross misconduct, or D, physical or mental incapacity to perform the functions of office of the governor. Two, Parliament shall enact legislation providing for the procedure of removal of the county governor on any grounds mentioned in Clause A. Section 33 of the County Government Act 2012, Standing Order Number 75 of the Senate Standing Orders and the fifth schedule to the Senate Standing Orders provide for the procedure to be followed in the hearing and determination of the proposed removal from office by impeachment of the Governor. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, by a way of a status update, pursuant to Rules 4A and 6 of Part 1 of the fifth schedule to the Senate Standing Orders, the Senate invited the Governor to appear and be represented before the Senate during the investigation. The Senate further invited the Governor, if he chose to appear before the Senate, to file an answer to the charges with the Office of the Clerk and Senate by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, 15th December 2020, setting out A, the Governor's response to the particulars of allegations, B, the mode of appearance before the Senate, whether in person by an advocate or in person and by the advocate, C, the names and addresses of the persons to be called 
as witnesses, if any, and witness statements containing a summary of the evidence to be presented by the such witnesses before the Senate and D, any other evidence to be relied on. Pursuant to Rules 4B and 7 of Part 1 of the Fifth Schedule to the Senate Standing Orders, the Senate notified the County Assembly of the dead for the commencement of the investigations and invited the County Assembly to the designate mem and designate members of the County Assembly, being not more than three members, if any, who shall appear before the Senate to represent the County Assembly during the investigation. The County Assembly was further invited if it chose to appear before the Senate to file with the Office of the Clerk of the, the, the clerk of the Senate by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, 15th December 2020, documentations to A, designating the members of the county assembly, being not more than three members, if any, who shall attend and represent the assembly in the proceedings before Senate, B, indicating the mode of appearance before the Senate, whether in person by advocate or in person and by advocate, indicating the names, addresses of the, address, addresses of the persons to be called as witnesses, if any, and witness statements containing a summary of the evidence to be presented by such witnesses before the Senate, and D, specifying any other evidence to be relied upon. On. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, on Tuesday, 15th December 2020, the Office of the Clerk of the Senate received a response to the inv invitation to appear issued to the Governor from MS J. Harrison, Kinyanjui, and company advocates who indicated that the governor had appointed the firm to represent him in the proceedings before the Senate and that the governor would appear in person and by advocates. To the, to the, response, to the response were attached various documents, including a notice pre pre preliminary objection. The office of the clerk of the Senate also received a response to the invitation to appear issued to the governor from MS Nyamu and Nyamu ad a company advocates setting out response to the particulars of allegations and providing evidence to be relied on. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, on Monday, 14th December, 2020, on Tuesday, 15th December, 2020, the Office of the Clerk of the Senate received a response to the invitation to appear issued to the County Assembly from Honorable Benson Mutura, MCA, the Speaker, Nairobi City County Assembly, which provided the names of three members of the County Assembly designated to attend and represent the County Assembly in the proceedings before the Senate, and also stated that the County Assembly would appear in person and by, by a team of advocates led by Mr. Ndegwanjiru, Mr. Duncan Okach, and Mr. Ashoya Biko Bryan to be assisted by four other advocates. B, a list of three witnesses. C, a list of 11 persons whom the County Assembly requested the Senate to summon to appear and leave further evidence to be relied upon. Pursuant to Rule 8 of Part 1 of the Fifth Schedule to the Senate Standing Orders on Tuesday, 15 December 2020, the Clerk of the Senate furnished each party with the documentations filed by each party. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, the hearing program, which has been circulated, details the various activities in the hearing and determination of the matter and the time allocated to each uh, activity. It will be crucial that all the parties comply with the time allocated. The parties will be notified of the balance of time on each activity through the clerks at the table. 15, in summary, the program states that today, Wednesday, 16th December 2020, after we have dispensed with preliminary matters, the charges against the governor submitted by the county assembly shall be read to the governor. This will be followed by an opening statement to be made on behalf of the county assembly. Thereafter, the, an opening statement shall be made on behalf of the governor. After the conclusion of the opening statements, the presentation of the case of the county assembly shall commence and should take us to, up to the end of today's sitting. At the sitting scheduled for tomorrow, Thursday 17th, 2020, the governor will have an opportunity to present his case before the Senate. This will be followed by a closing statement on behalf of the county assembly and a closing statement on behalf of the governor. 17th, the Senate shall then proceed to a closed session for deliberations prior to voting on each of the charges in accordance with Section 37 of the County Government Act 2012 and Standing Order 75-6 of the Senate Standing Orders. The voting shall be by county delegations. The governor shall cease to hold office if a majority of the county delegation of the Senate vote to uphold any impeachment charge. If, however, the vote in the Senate fails to result in the removal of the governor pursuant to standing order 75-7,
the Speaker of the Senate shall notify the Speaker of the Nairobi City County Assembly accordingly. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, this hearing is being conducted at a very challenging time when the COVID-19 pandemic is with us. As has been the practice in the sittings of the Senate since the start of the pandemic, the sittings shall be conducted in strict compliance with the COVID-19 guidelines issued by the Minister of Health and in various communications from the Chair. I therefore implore you, Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, to observe and abide by the COVID-19 uh, guidelines throughout the sittings. As I conclude, I would like to assure you all that the Senate is cognizant of the gravity of the matter with which it is seized and that it shall accord the parties a fair hearing. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, I now invite counsel for the Nairobi City Council Assembly to introduce the legal team of the County Assembly and the members of the Nairobi County Assembly representing the County Assembly by stating the full names and designation of each person. Yes, Senator Mtulakilota Jr. Yes, a minute here. Before we commence, Speaker, I'll, I'll begin with your last paragraph. Mr. Speaker, COVID-19 has not spared the Senate of the disease and the way we are seated today is in violation of all the rules. Mr. Speaker, as we sit here, people are coughing, as are sneezing, your gallery is full. Mr. Speaker, how do we then give anybody assurance here that we have complied, yet people are sitting neck to neck on the other side? And your gallery, Mr. Speaker, you can see people are still walking in. This is the worst chamber to have a sitting with me, people seated in. We told you, Speaker, that we didn't want a plenary seated here where we would be so crowded. We don't want to sit in a death trap. And if we can't sit somewhere else, we should be told so that we go for virtual seating because this is a death trap as it is. It is. And it's not worth it. It's not worth it at all. We have lost colleagues. We have somebody in the mortuary. This is a death trap, Speaker. Okay, Honorable Senators. In the gallery, we were allowed the numbers that are sitting there, but inside here, we have to rearrange. This cannot be allowed to continue because it is, uh, it's dangerous. I want to agree with Honorable Mutula Kiloza Jr. that as a Senate, we have also been affected by COVID. And therefore, whatever is before us is not bigger than COVID, is not bigger than our health. So let us uh, rearrange so that people we sit according to how the seats have been designated. So uh, let, us, let us do this. If you are sitting where it's not written, sit here, please go to the other chamber. In any case, you know, we are just going to do most of the, most of, it's going to just to be hearing, you're going to be listening. So on, let's, let's respect that. Uh, that rule. If you are sitting where it's not designated seat, please relocate. Yes, Senator, I think, a little uh, my, my minority. Asking members to relocate is also very difficult while you are sitting on the chair. Because while you are sitting on the chair and the mace is where it is, it means we are formally in session. Mr. Speaker, me, I would suggest we have a break of five minutes or 10 minutes, and people are allowed in in strict compliance with the regulations. We cannot be seen, even the example we are sending out to the country is, is, not, is not proper. Okay, uh, what the senators? In that case, I want to suspend the seating for 10 minutes. To, 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 to.
Viewers, the Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Ken Lusaka, has directed that the sitting takes 10 minutes break. This is to allow for proper adherence of COVID-19 directive. We are taking 10 minutes break. We'll be back in a short while. KBC Channel 1. So are you going to pay attention to me now? We have to get out of here, Mother, okay? That is something that we can't do. What do you mean we can't do that? You promised me. I don't think there was ever a bride who's as much in love as me. And I'm the happiest woman in the world to see my... I can call you my daughter, right? I don't even know why you have to ask. Oh, honey. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has put together... Let no man put asunder. Juntos, el paraíso conocimos. El paraíso conocimos. With Ramon. Tonight on KBC Channel One. Where's your Mimi? It is all the love of Cobra. Good work. Arrest this bugger. Who is this? Can I help you? Who is this? I needed more time with him. More time. Although this doesn't make it better, we are here for you. I am here for you. You will always be my son. I get that. Imagine traveling to Egypt or any of the Middle East countries just to buy a curtain or a handcraft. That would not make sense, but with little creativity put into play, voila, it's possible. That land of Pharaoh was literally here in Kenya during the Egypt and Middle East Expo. Matters Art and Craft took center stage from interior design accessories to jewelry, you name it, and it was pretty much here. This is brass. Yeah, we produce it in Egypt and we make it by handmade, we manufacture it in our country. And this is by handmade, 100%. And this is brass. We make it handmade and then we use in chemical colors to lacquer it and never change. This, for example, this is the material, it is in glass also, writing in Arabic, Quran. Is, uh, we call it is relief, is making by hand also. And you can use as decoration like this. Even this one you can use in the set, even you can hang it in the wall like this. This is the King Tut, famously youngest king. They did youngest king. He was uh, controlled in Egypt also. And his wife is in Fertiti. He's famous. He had a long story of this man, the king, the pharaoh. Most of this jewelry is made of uh, copper and brass with the uh, real stones, like this type. This is made in with the uh, real crystals, real stones, and uh, base metal is brass, uh, copper, with gold plated. Complete jewelry is nickel free, no allergy problem with our jewelry, and fine quality gold plated. 
the watch is also uh, this is another material brass in this uh, silver is also mixed with the brass so 25% is silver and 75% uh, is brass and uh, the stones are all real onyx semi precious stones precious stones mixed I come here for uh, many times because my work is handmade work. Not I go buy from other places and I come sell here. No, many people for many exhibition, they go buy from stores or from in China or from in other country and they come here for selling. Me, I never do that because my products is only by handmade working. I beginning from the wood and the mirror, everything in my stand and the perfume natural. I'm not making it with alcohol, with oil, no. All is as natural from us. And the wood also is a natural. We make it bronzy and copper, like that I show you now. You can see. For example, this is a wood. This is a wood has come all white color. After that, we cut it, like what size I need it. And I burn it, I make a color. I don't make a, in, a, in a fire, no. I bring some paper, some cotton. And I burn it and I put it inside. He make it directly change the color. Because the color that comes from the bird is a black. After that we make it we don't make a paint it the color black or brown or uh, any white, no, like anyhow it's not. After that we bring it some of here. Bronzy or copper like what you see here. And when we cut it, we make it first his complain. We go make by handmaids. We have a many stuffing when this is after that we bring it this stuff here. Musmari, small one, and we fix it. Anything I make it in is my mind. I'm not go on internet and I do it something and I make it. No, I cut it the material. I cut it. I make it handmade. And after that I do. Sometimes you find all oh, is not the same working because this is, I'm not go mix stamp. If I do stamp, it's come correct. No, this model here is not the same. This other one not the same other one because the color of mine of a handmade. While many came to sell and promote their businesses, some were keen at popularizing their roots and culture. Our main focus is towards promotion of our art, culture. Uh, though I am from uh, India, but we are all one, you know. And uh, this is where we produce is, uh, the cotton, we produce handmade bags, we produce handmade cushion covers, brocade fabric cushion covers. This is all handmade because we support art, we support our culture and craftsmanship, you know, like a bag like this you see. This is all handmade. It takes approximately around two days to make one bag like this because this is all handmade, a craftsmanship as we say. So our focus is towards the promotion of our culture, promotion of the country and promotion of this art. Like this you can also see there are all handmade cushion covers. The bag as you see, these bags are also all handmade. So this is basically art. It's being promoted all over the world and uh, we've always been supported by the Egypt group. So it's been a lovely experience in Kenya. The people have been so nice. I've been to so many countries in Africa, but the best I feel, uh, the warmth I get uh, when I visit Kenya is the best. You know, the people are very warm and they give us a brilliant response to the products. They understand what the craft is all about, you know, and they support these things. Keen eyes and a huge appetite for unique and rare commodities, Kenyans from divergent social backgrounds from the Isabit Center, where the event was happening to sample what the Egyptians and Indians had to offer. Indeed, everyone had something to take home. Come to Egyptian Expo to see what they have today. Because I've been coming for the expo and sometimes they come with different things. But since they have come today here, they have got different things, they are beautiful what what my Nazot we have here in Kenya. And I love them. They're so nice, beautiful. I come to shop here every time the, the Egyptians come. And so far, so good. The, the goods are nice. They're very unique. Uh, I've never seen other good things like this one. Uh, okay, I shop every time they come. But the things, okay, they are durable, they work well, and they are at fair price. Curtains, jewelry, handcraft, wood and metal furniture 
wooden antiques and a host of other products displayed a potent mix of the Egypt and Middle East culture all too well. Style breeds confidence and confidence breeds grandeur. On this account, the goods exhibited were top-notch and were one of a kind never to be found anywhere else. Very nice, really. They like our products because it's everything is new for them. Uh, and the people like our jewelry, the reason being this is not allergy, no allergy. And uh, all real stones we sell. And we never sell any fake items to them. As the expo continues to gain momentum, one thing is clear. Kenyans have had a test of it and they are clamoring for more. It is wonderful. This is, you can say this is the same like our country. It's my, it's my second country, the same. I feel like in Egypt. We appreciate that and continuance. We have to prove Kenya and Kenya prove us. The Kenyan people is a nice, good, good people. A nice here. Where, because I go in here, the Sari Center, I go in Charm, I go in Aldorit, I go in Kosumo, Mombasa. All I like this country too much. This is second country for me. Tonight on KBC Channel One. So are you gonna pay attention to me now? We have to get out of here, Mother, okay? That is something that we can't do. What do you mean we can't do that? You promised me. I don't think there was ever a bride who's as much in love as me. And I'm the happiest woman in the world to see my... I can call you my daughter, right? I don't even know why you have to ask. Oh, honey. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. What God has put together, let no man put asunder. Juntos, el paraíso conocimos. El paraíso conocimos. With Ramon. This weekend on KBC Channel One. I was born in absolute poverty. It's difficult for my dad and my mom to make ends meet. Daily life was struggle. My vision was to become a medical doctor. It was, uh, you were at a crusade in Nigeria, and this man had been raised from the dead. Yes. And they called me in to watch it, and I'm like, wow, that God would move so powerfully in your ministry. What is it about your ministry that causes God to do incredible miracles? When they surrounded us, my son escaped, and they took my husband away. So put your fist in the air like a winner and say, it's my winning season. Come on. It's my this weekend on KBC Channel One. We just need to catch them doing it. We want you to move both the meth and the money. What's in it for me besides more cash? A lot more cash. Guys, we've got company rolling in from the West, hard and fast. Drager and the rest of his punk pilots in handcuffs by sundown. You do what you gotta do to get him back. You got my friend killed. Running drugs made it happen. Kill speed. Now the fate of that particular governor lies in the Senate and it's upon him to prove to senators that that impeachment was done wrongly. In February, you remember this year, Sunko survived an a motion after the court intervened, stopping the tabling of a motion against him. But that came to pass last month when members of Nairobi County Assembly 
impeached the governor during the impeachment process the governor was accused of gross violation of the constitution also matters to do with the misuse of public office and harassment of officers of Nairobi County Assembly. The members of County Assembly also said the governor was lacking the mental capability to run the county government of Nairobi. The motion moved by MCA Ogada. The MCA rallied the county legislators to exercise their powers to impeach the governor as efforts were put in place to have Sunko mend his way proved to be futile. The bell keeps ringing, signaling that the session where the senator and the governor for Nairobi County, again the senators of the Republic of Kenya, where the governor for Nairobi County is set to present his evidence, set to be cross-examined by senators present in the chamber as well as outside, those sitting outside the chamber to get to understand the grounds for removal of Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko. The sitting for today, our dear viewers, was necessitated by the gazettement by the Speaker of the Senate, Honorable Ken Lusaka, requiring that senators hear the matter of Governor Mike Sonko in plenary. Fifty-nine members of county assemblies allied to Governor Mike Sonko, who happened to be with him in Kuala, however claimed that their votes were illegally cast in the total votes, that is 88, who voted to have the governor sent parking. And today begins the first day when the governor for Nairobi County will be facing 67 senators after those particular special settings were gazetted by the Senate to allow for senators to hear and determine his impeachment motion. According to the speaker, is that Sunko's case will be the only agenda before the House after which senators will go for recess and resume on the 9th of February, the day the House is set to resume the normal sitting in the next year's calendar. As it is right now, the COVID-19 guidelines have been observed in the House, and the House is set to resume from the 10 minutes break and have the governor and his council introduced to the chamber before the hearing begins and pass out to Article 251 and 251B. The Speaker of the Senate just walked into the chamber and now hand you over for the live broadcast. Enjoy your viewing.
Okay, take your seats, honorable senators. Okay, um, I'll just read what I said last before we broke. That I'll now invite counsel for the Nairobi City County Assembly to introduce the legal team of the County Assembly and the members of the Nairobi City County Assembly representing the County Assembly by stating the full name and designation of each person. Uh, may it please you, uh, Honorable Speaker, members of the Senate, my name is Ndegwanjiro. And have your masks on all, all the time, all of you. Thank you. I am the lead counsel in these uh, proceedings. With me I have Mr. Milimo, who is going to do the entire introduction of the team taking the proceedings. Much obliged. Mr. Milimo. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members of the Senate, my name is Benson Milimo. I'm here to introduce the team from the Nairobi City County, starting with the members, one being honorable Michael Ogada, the minority leader. Member County Assembly represent, representing Embakasi Ward. The second, Paul Kigwadi, Majority Whip. Member County Assembly representing Miango, Miango Ward. The third one, Honorable Peter Imatok, aka Jateso, Minority Whip, representing Makongeni Ward. The fourth, Honorable Moses Sogeto. Minority Deputy Whip representing Kilimani Ward. I have with me my learned colleagues, starting with Michael Osundwa, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Mr. Duncan Okach, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Mr. Ndegwa Njiru, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Mr. Ndegwa Mwangi, Advocate of the High, of, of the High Court of Kenya, Mr. Kevin Kokebe, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Mr. Biko Ashoya, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Mr. Gabriel Chesoro, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Ms. Cynthia Sheunda, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya. And lastly, Mr. Ngira Dennis, Advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, that is the team from the Nairobi City County. I thank you. Thank you very much. I now Similarly, invite counsel for the governor to introduce the legal team representing the governor and the governor by stating the full name, designation, and designation of each person. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members of the Senate, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Harrison Kinyanjui. I appear on behalf of His Excellency the Governor. I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Court of Appeal, the Supreme Court, all subordinate courts in the Republic of Kenya. With me to represent His Excellency the Governor, I have Mr. Wilfred Nyamu. He is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Oops, sorry. I apologize. I have, it's because of the muffling of my sound, my voice. I have also with me Mr. Kwanga Mboya, advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I have also with me present Mr. Honorable Maanzo. He is a member of parliament. And I have with me also honorable members of the Nairobi City County Assembly, who, because of time, I will not enumerate each and every one of them, although they have been named in the deposition of His Excellency the Governor, in response 
And I will, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, beg to save time by saying that we do have also over 57 of the said honorable members of the Derby City County Assembly, some of whom are seated in uh, the balcony up there. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, allow me before I sit down that I invoke your rules in part one of the fifth schedule, which designate and delineate the procedure to be followed in plenary. Honorable members, we raised a notice of preliminary objection. This the was uh, order. Order. You're I supposed to thank you. introduce your members. We are yet to get there. So just thank do you very much, what Mr. I have directed you to do. Very well. Honorable Senators, on behalf of the Senate, I welcome the County Assembly's team, the Governor's team, members of the public and the media to the Senate and to these proceedings. I now invite the clerk to read the charges against Honorable Michael Mbuvi Songo, the Governor of Nairobi City County. I thank you. The Honorable Mike Mbuvi Sonko, the Governor, Nairobi City County. The charges against you are as follows. One, gross violation of the Constitution or any other law. Gross violation of the Constitution, the County Governments Act 2012, the Public Procurement and Disposal Act 2015, and the Public Finance Management Act 2012. A, the governor of the Nairobi City County has violated Articles 201A, D, E of the Constitution of Kenya on principles of public finance management and Section 154 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, the County Allocation of Revenue Act 2015 on the use of conditional grants from the national government by the diversion or negligently causing to be diverted conditional funds, for instance, in the use of the road levy and bursary funds to pay for garbage collection contractors and lawyers, contrary to the bursary fund regulations and the approved budget. While the governor requested Kenya shillings 297 million for bursary from the controller of budget, these funds were illegally used to pay garbage contractors and lawyers. B, the governor of the Nairobi City County has violated Article 10, Article 201B and D of the Constitution by failing, refusing, and or neglecting to comply with the provisions of Regulation 20 of the Public Finance Management County Government's Regulations 2015, which failure, refusal, and or, and or negligence has compromised the provision of services envisioned under part two of the fourth schedule to the Constitution 2010, inter alia, most crucial provision of health services during the raging pandemic. C, the governor of the Nairobi City County has violated Article 187.2a of the Constitution and Article 5.2 of the Deed of Transfer by his continued willful refusal to execute the statutory warrants essential to the release of funds from the county revenue fund, which has grounded the provision of services of not only the county executive, but of the Nairobi Metropolitan Service and its exercise of the transferred functions. This action violates the provisions of Article 187.2a of the Constitution and Article 5.2 of the Deed of Transfer whence the County Assembly duly adopted the budget of the financial year 2020-2021 and enacted the Nairobi City County Appropriations Bill 2020. D, the Governor has violated the provisions of Article 183 of the Constitution as read together with Standing Order Number 193 and Section 123 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 by undermining the authority of the County Assembly 
Once the governor has refused and or failed to implement resolutions of the county assembly or forward a report detailing his inability to do so in line with Article 183 of the Constitution as read with Standing Order Number 193 with respect to county public debt and debt management under the provisions of Section 123 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 failure of which the county has been unable to control and manage county public debt. The result is unmitigated accrual of debt, which has ballooned the county's overall debt to unmanageable levels, rising from Kenya shillings 56 billion when he assumed office in 2017 to Kenya shillings 76.794 billion as at 31st December 2019, hence further violating the provisions of Article 201 of the Constitution. E, the governor has violated Article 227.1 of the Constitution on procurement of goods and services, as read together with provisions of the Public Finance, of the Public Procurement and Disposal Act 2015, by flouting the principles of public finance management in as far as public procurement of goods and services is concerned, where the Public Procurement Regulatory Authority, PPRA, faulted the procurement process for the construction of the Dandora Stadium. The authority flagged irregularities in the award of the tender, alteration of contract specifications, suspected irregular payments, and forgery of documents. Despite technical evaluators questioning the quality of work, the PPRA indicted the county government for paying, inducted the county government uh, for paying Kenya shillings 197, 196.87 million to the contractor. F, the governor violated section 35.4 and section 45.1 of the County Governments Act 2012 as read together with section 104 and section 148 of the Public Finance Management Act whence between 2018 and early 2019, and contrary to the law, the Office of the County Executive Committee Member for Finance and that of the Chief Officer for Finance were held by the same person, one Miss Winfred Gadagu, which situation occasioned confusion and inefficiencies at the County Treasury, hence failing to promote good governance and compromising the doctrine of transparency and accountability within the county government. G, the governor has violated the provisions of section 104 of the Public Finance Management Act on the responsibilities and powers of a county treasury, whence through inaction, action, omissions, and commissions, he continues to preside over a broken public finance management system, whence the county treasury remains ineffective. Despite various resolutions of the county assembly urging the governor to improve efficiencies by decentralizing the finance fu function to sectors as required by the provisions of section 148 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012, the county continues to operate in contravention of the law. H, the governor has violated the provisions of Article 5.5 of the Deed of Transfer of Functions by his refusal to hand over the necessary documentation to enable the Kenya Revenue Authority to undertake optimal revenue collection under the transferred functions. For instance, by the end of June 2020, the county had collected just Kenya shillings 8.4 billion against a projected revenue target of 17.05 billion, which was partly due to failure by the county government to facilitate the Kenya Revenue Authority to hit its optimal potential as the revenue collection agent appointed pursuant to the deed of transfer of functions. I, the governor grossly violated Article 201 of the Constitution on the prudent use of financial resources and Section 159 of the Public Finance Management Act 2012 as read with Section 7 of the Nairobi City County Tax Waivers Administration Act 2013 by unilaterally and arbitrarily 
issuing waivers in total disregard of the law. The governor was aware that the law provides that waivers should be granted by the CECM for finance. J, the governor has violated the provisions of Article 201D of the Constitution on principles that guide all aspects of public finance in the Republic, and Article 227.1 on procurement of public goods and services, and the provisions of the Public Procurement and Disposal Act 2015 by willfully interfering in the award of the tender for the construction of the Dandora Stadium as established by the PPRB, leading to loss of public funds in overseeing payments despite concerns by technical officers. K, okay. the governor has violated the provisions of Article 201 of the Constitution and the Public Finance Management Act 2012 on principles that guide all aspects of prudent use of public finance, where either intentionally or negligently he presided over massive loss and theft of county public funds in the three years he has been in office, as evidenced by the Auditor General's report of 2018-2019, which raised the red flag over the city's stalled uh, 204.2 billion uh, projects, as well as failure by the county government to meet its, its revenue targets. L. The governor has violated the provisions of Article 5 of the deed of transfer of functions by sabotaging the transfer of functions. The governor is yet to provide NMS with crucial information necessary in aiding the carrying out of the transferred functions. For instance, failure to facilitate NMS with data on ongoing projects, pending bills, and staff payroll details on transferred functions has greatly derailed the performance of these functions to the detriment of the public good. Charge number two, abuse of office. A, that the governor has abused his office by violating Article 75 of the Constitution as read with Section 11 and 13 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 on the conduct of state officers where the governor has persistently intimidated, harassed, and molested officers of the county executive, including blackmailing his county executive committee members and chief officers with one-year contracts whose renewal he has undertaken arbitrarily, leaving the officers jittery about their employment and creating a climate of fear uncertainty and despondence. For instance, in May 2019, the governor failed to renew the contracts of all 23 chief officers, instead directing that they hand over to directors, greatly affecting the continuity of service delivery and accountability in the county. B, the governor has abused his office by violating Article 75 of the Constitution as read with Section 16 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012, by unlawfully using public funds to pay for his daughter's travel to New York, USA, to allegedly attend the County First Ladies Conference held during the 62nd session of the Commission on the Status of Women 2018. Third judge, gross misconduct. A, that the governor has violated Article 73 of the Constitution by failing to promote public confidence in the integrity in the office of the governor, following his being charged before the anti-corruption court, thus prejudicing and or compromising the social contract and trust bestowed upon him by the people of Nairobi by virtue of Article 1 of the Constitution. As a consequence, therefore, the governor has been barred from accessing his office via the court order and thus incapable of performing his functions under Section 30 of the County Government Act 2012. B, the governor has violated Article 73 of the Constitution and Section 8 and 11 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 on public trust and professionalism, where he is on record admitting that he was intoxicated and thus not in the right frame of mind when he signed the deed of transfer for the transfer of certain functions of the county to the national government in February 2020. In his own words, 
hawa watu wa state house wali ni confuse na pombe kwanza by the time i was meeting the president for the signing i was just seeing zigzag this allegation of impropriety on the part of state house imputes improper motive on the office of the president and brings disrepute ridicule hatred and contempt to the office of the president and of the governor c the governor has violated article 73 of the constitution and the leadership and integrity act 2012 on the responsibilities of leadership by failing to professionally perform his constitutionally sanctioned duties owing to his constant absence from office even before he was formally restrained by the courts from accessing his office due to corruption charges whence the governor remained constantly unreachable in person or on his phone for inordinately longer periods of time to the huge detriment of the performance of the functions of the county executive indeed the governor purported to execute the functions of the county government from his home in Moa Hills, Machakos County. D, the governor has violated Article 75 c of the Constitution as read with Section 11 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 in respect of conduct of state officers by drawing a salary and hefty allowances and enjoying the privileges of the office he holds while failing to diligently report to work and being perennially absent even before he was formally restrained by the courts from accessing his office due to corruption charges. E, the governor has violated Section 8 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 on public trust, where he has constantly used his position to abuse public trust in the county government by exercising the powers of his office in a manner detrimental to prudent public service delivery by persistent use of divisive and unbecoming language which undermines the office he holds and the county administrative administration. F, the governor has violated Article 73 and 75 of the Constitution on conduct of state officers that is demeaning to the offices they hold and Section 11 of the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 by persistently and willfully using, publicizing and publishing abusive and unbecoming words and language as evidenced by his social media posts and numerous rants in which he has hurled abuses and conducted himself in a manner that undermines and demeans the office of the governor. The fourth charge, crimes under national law. There are serious reasons to believe that the governor has committed crimes under national law, specifically the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, which crimes he has been charged for in the anti-corruption court. Okay, honorable senators, I will now invite opening statement on behalf of the county assembly for 30 minutes. Ah. Probably just before we go to the opening statement, would seek your guidance in respect to a letter dated 14th of December, which was sent to you by the clerk, by the Speaker of the County Assembly, which letter sought your intervention in respect to the procurement of various witnesses. That means your assistance in respect to the issuance of summons for purposes of attendance of these witnesses. Mr. Speaker, sir, as it may be noted from the motion of impeachment that has just been read, read before this honorable house, these witnesses are so crucial in so far as the adducing of evidence for or in favor of the county assembly is an issue. In this respect, Mr. Speaker, sir, We invoked the provisions of the fifth schedule to the studying orders, the same being the schedule guiding the proceedings before you, honorable members, for purposes of subpoenaing 
these witnesses. Mr. Speaker, sir, just to highlight the essence of these witnesses, which we are seeking your guidance as to whether or not the summons were issued, among them is one um, Wycliffe Ogalo. Wycliffe Ogalo is the Commissioner General for Prison Services, and it will be essential when we are adducing evidence in respect to the governor's violation. There is a point of intervention. Sorry, Senator Orengo. Much obliged. I was just wondering, you know, and you have laid out how we are going to deal with this case. Uh, the, the trial will not start uh, until you know the opening statements have been made. Uh, I think probably if we go now into issue of witnesses, uh, where in, indeed is making an application, uh, I think we are not there yet. I think we should finish with the opening statements and then we move forward. Just yes, um, I agree with Senator Rengo that make your opening statements, which you have 30 minutes, then we are yet to get there. Just the way I gave direction on the other request. Well guided, and thank you for the benefit with the wisdom of Senator Orengo. Mr. Speaker, sir, I will jointly make this... There is another intervention, sorry, Senator Kindiki. On a point of order, Mr. Speaker, a further point of order, based on what my learned friend, Senator Orengo, has raised, I think, Mr. Speaker, it will help the parties appearing before this House if you could uh, perhaps give further, further guidance to, uh, to ensure that we don't keep on interrupting them from time to time, such that, Mr. Speaker, that these, in my view, are proceedings uh, of the Senate. Uh, they are not court proceedings. Therefore, when the Speaker directs that do this, you do it unless that interruption by counsel or any other party is caused by a breach of the standing orders of this house. And on that, uh, one must say the standing order that has been violated and seek redress, as opposed to making applications left and center and every party trying to introduce applications and things they want to do at a particular point of time. The speaker directs, do this, you do it, unless you think there is something in the standing orders that has been violated and you must point it out. Mr. Speaker, I thought perhaps for going forward for the next two days, that should be your direction. Yeah, I think I'll be giving direction and uh, please just do what I direct. Uh, don't be in a hurry to get to a place, a certain point. Let's just go systematically. There's a way we are going to arrive at all that. So proceed to make your statement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I had indicated that with me, I'll be joining issues with my landed friend, Mr. Biko, in giving the opening statement. So I'll only take 10 minutes and I'll reserve the rest to him. Mr. Speaker, sir, and the honorable members of the Senate, this House has gathered here today in respect to hear the motion for of the governor of Nairobi County. Mr. Speaker, sir, it shall be noted that the motion before you was moved and passed by an uh, overwhelming majority of 88 members of the county assembly representing various wards in this uh, uh, county. Mr. Speaker, sir, when the members of the county assembly moved to move this impeachment and the resolution for impeachment of the governor, they were not actuated with malice. They were actually moving to enhance the provisions of Article 10 insofar as the protection of the sovereignty of the people of this republic is an issue. Mr. Speaker, sir, the members of Nairobi County Assembly moved to pass a resolution to impeach the governor, having well acknowledged the provisions of Article 10 that calls for the principles and the values of governance insofar as the question of transparency is an issue 
the question of accountability is an issue the question of good governance is an issue and the question of the aspects of integrity is an issue they were not lost of the fact that when somebody assumes an office and that of the status of the governor that person must conduct and behavior either in public or in private must be beyond reproach it must be a conduct that squares out with that of the sister's wife but what are we having we are having a case of a governor gone rogue a governor who fails to appreciate that is holding a public office and there is expectation for him that has been led as set down by the law this house and the previous houses they have enacted the leadership and integrity act and more so mr speaker sir the people of kenya enacted chapter six of the constitution that laid the bare minimum upon which a state officer or a public officer must conduct himself in our proceedings mr speaker sir it shall marvel you when we present evidence to overwhelming evidence to the fact that the governor is not fit to continue holding this office to the fact that the governor has not only abrogated chapter six and the leadership uh, uh, leadership and integrity act but he has also fragrantly fragrantly misconstrued and held himself in a manner that is contentious to the sovereignty of the people of kenya we'll be posing a question at the fullness of time upon presentation of our witnesses whether this is one person who is fit to continue holding this office it shall be presented before you mr speaker sir overwhelming evidence of how a governor has plundered the resources of this country the resources of the wanjiko the resources of the hustler nation that is always spoken about everybody must be called to the account be you in the hustlers nation be you in the dynasty nation everybody must be called to account that is what the county assembly of nairobi is moving to do to you this morning mr speaker sir it shall surprise you how a governor out of the frolic of his own has moved to square out and to compete with extravagancy of Maria Antoinette. We are actually having a position of the French Revolution. The French Revolution was triggered by the extravagancy of the Queen. The extravagancy of the Queen caused the reign of King Louis XVI. If it happened, in, seven, in 1679, why should it not happen in the 21st century? If it happened then, honorable members, why should a governor who by a demonstrating extravagancy putting his daughter in an helicopter for a tour in the New York, why should it not happen today? There is a price for everything, Mr. Speaker, sir. And the price for accountability the price for transparency demands that the governor vacates office. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is not lost of this house, the philosophy by Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes said, Mr. Speaker, sir, that human by nature, human are greedy, they are cruel, they are selfish, and they are driven by the desire to grab and maintain power by all means. That is the person we have presented before you this morning. A person who is greedy, a person of greedy of public resources, should not have mercy of this house, Mr. Speaker, sir. A person who is selfish and who wants to amass wealth at the expense of the taxpayers deserves no mercy mr speaker sir mr speaker sir we shall be presenting overwhelming evidence to an extent 
that this house shall not be left with any other option but to agree with your brothers and sisters in the county assembly of Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, sir, the question of good governance cannot be compromised. The question of transparency cannot be debated. The question of accountability cannot be subject of debate. Once you hold a public office, you must be able to understand that you are accountable. And what is the responsibility of the county assembly, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, the responsibility of the county assembly is not to adduce evidence beyond reasonable doubt at any given time. It is only to substantiate the charges. I promise you, honorable members, Mr. Speaker, sir, that the fullness of time we shall have evidence to substantiate that the governor is not fit to continue holding public office. What becomes of our sportsmen and sports ladies? What becomes of the youths when a stadium that is supposed to be constructed of concrete is constructed of scrub metals? What becomes of our youth? Is this person conscious of the intra and extra generational equity principles recited in the preamble to our constitution? Is this person worthy to, share, to, to usher in a promise for the youths? Can this person give hope to our youths if he is pondering what belongs to them? Mr. Speaker, sir, we have evidence. I rest my case and call upon Mr. Biko to continue with the rest of the opening statement. Much obliged. Mr. Speaker, sir, <clears throat> without wasting time, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by the great King Solomon towards the end of his reign. And this is what he says, that there is a time for everything, that there is a season for every activity under heaven. And he proceeds to enumerate those seasons. And this is what he says, that there is a time, there is, that there is a time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear and a time to build. And then he goes on and on and on. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Senators, the Governor is aware of this fact and the wisdom of the words of Solomon. And that is why the Governor po uh, posted in his official Twitter handle of the 16th day of November 2020 at 3.49 p.m. And this is what he says that jail me, there is life in prison. Impeach me, there is life after politics. Kill me, there is life after death. His Excellency cannot be far from the truth. Honorable members, we are not going to urge you to kill the governor. But this morning we are going to urge you to do one honorable thing to impeach the governor of Nairobi for the reasons that my colleague has well enumerated. My colleague has told this house that we have evidence for the charges that have been preferred against the governor. Honorable Speaker, the Nairobi City County Assembly appears before you and your honorable members today, not by mistake, but out of necessity. It has become absolutely necessary that we have a sitting today. And why do I say so, honorable members? I say so because Honorable Mike Mbuvi Sonko has absolutely and completely refused to rise to the occasion and become the governor of the capital city that the people of Nairobi elected him to be. He has, with time without number, confirmed 
that he does not only lack the mental and moral capacity, but also the intellectual capacity to tackle the problems affecting the people of Nairobi. And we will be demonstrating uh, that to this house. We will also demonstrate how the unending ineptitude of the governor has resulted to loss of taxpayers' money. Honorable Speaker, we are reminded that the Nairobi City County Assembly has nothing personal against the governor. Nothing absolutely personal. But as representative of the people of Nairobi, representing the various wards, we urge this house that by the power given to them by the people that they represent, they've interrogated the behavior of the governor, his leadership skills and styles for the last three years, Honorable Speaker. And they've arrived at a conclusion that he is no longer fit to hold that office, honorable, uh, uh, honorable members. And that is, why when the, when, that is why when the motion was moved for the impeachment of Governor Mike Sonko, out of the 90 people that participated, 88, 88 honorable members gave it a clean bill of health. And that is why we are before you, honorable members. And so therefore, we have lined three witnesses, three crucial witnesses, and evidence that we shall be presenting before this honorable court to illustrate to this honorable house of the grounds that have brought the honorable governor, His Excellency Mike Buvisonko, before this house, your lordship. Uh, 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 honorable Speaker. So I will not go into the nitty gritties, the witnesses that we've lined up, the evidence that we have provided to this House is going to bail us out. And at the end of the day, Honorable Speakers and Honorable Members, we shall be urging this House that there can only be one thing that should happen to Honorable Mike Mbuvisonko as at close of business tomorrow. And that is Governor Mike Sonko. We shall be praying that he will be impeached by tomorrow, close of business. That shall be all for the opening statement. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now invite uh, opening statements on behalf of uh, the governor of Nairobi County government. 30 minutes. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, sir, and honorable members of the Senate, you have the mandate to exercise your authority within the scope of your standing orders. Only if, and only if, you are satisfied beyond peradventure that the county assembly executed its mandate before the assembly, not only within the provisions of Article 1811, but also the County Government Act Section 33 as read with the relevant standing orders of the county assembly. Honorable members, if any of you were to ask the advocates or any of the witnesses of the county assembly, did you furnish the governor with the evidence you are tabling before us, honorable members? The answer will be fumbling. But if you ask them, isn't it so that standing order number 72 sub who says that you should provide the governor with the evidence at least three days before the debate on the motion. Honorable members, you will find no evidence. You will find nothing that demonstrates, not even in the Hansard from the county assembly, that that 
mandatory requirement was met. Honorable members, Mr. Speaker, sir, in the result, the bundle that is before you stands expressly barred, which is the position of His Excellency the Governor, by operation of Rule 19 of Part 1 of the Fifth Schedule to your standing orders. That is a sieve, the standard against which you, honorable members, will inquire. Has the threshold for the evidence now, County Assembly, you are presenting to us been met? Did you present? Why I say so? Why His Excellency says so and will insist in furtherance of his objection on a preliminary way, honorable members, is that your own expression by way of the impeachment bill 2018 you had expressed yourselves on the floor and there instated in section 15 one of the impeachment act that a certificate must be produced before you mr speaker by the Speaker of the County Assembly, that there was compliance with that. His Excellency the Governor has sworn a deposition saying I was never presented with any evidence. You will ask, therefore, pursuant to your Rule 19 of Part 1 of the Fifth Schedule, is that evidence? admissible is that evidence that you can look into it is barred by express operation of your rules honorable members this is an honorable house that is governed and regulated by its rules and honorable members i am so happy that mr speaker sir you have issued rulings and directions solomon to direct, and his excellency the governor is humbly requesting that honorable members, we abide by the rules, excuse me, of your standing orders, wherein his excellency is saying the accusations leveled against him were contained in nothing but what, Mr. Speaker, sir, you have in the opening of this session enumerated and said that on the 4th of December, 2020, a communication came from the Speaker of the Nairobi City County Assembly. And what did it contain? A, the motion that has the charges. B, the list of the members who allegedly subscribed to that motion and see the answer that was there. Honorable members, the question is now, that communication did not contain a list of the witnesses that are now sought to be introduced, barred by your Rule 19. You cannot, therefore, look at those documents containing the evidence. You've been told by the council for the county assembly. They will call evidence to demonstrate. They will call evidence to demonstrate. Honorable members, I'm afraid with tremendous respect, Mr. Speaker, sir, Rule 19 of Part 1 of the Fifth Schedule of your rules expressly forbids, which is the gist and the thrust of our preliminary objection. And you have heard it be told to you that His Excellency the governor failed, refused, objected to assent to the Nairobi City County Appropriation Act of 2020. But they've omitted to inform me in their opening statement that that is a matter pending before court. The Constitutional Court yesterday, as late as yesterday, declared itself before the Honorable Justice Burima Constitutional Petition E348 of 2020, which again has another hearing date on the 18th of December. Honorable members, His Excellency the Governor is saying 
your standing orders in standing order number 98 3c forbid you from venturing there and may i remind you honorable members you have deference for our court the judicial authority espoused in article 159 one of our constitution derives from the people but the county assembly wants you honorable members mr speaker to trample on that right on that authority mr speaker sir his excellence the governor by means of his preliminary objection has stated that his refusal to assent to that appropriation act is sub -judice. and he will demonstrate in his preliminary objection which mr speaker sir I will urge and request that you make a direction upon so that then these honorable members mr speaker sir this honorable house in deference to the judicial authority that is espoused in article 159 2 is this honorable house defers that and yet cognizant of this very fundamental aspect mr speaker sir honorable members the county assembly has affirmed that very position which his excellency the governor will demonstrate to you in their own that vo yellow volume that should be volume one our index the orders of the court showing that the proceeding is alive and therefore my honorable lovely members of the senate his excellency the governor is saying there are pending proceedings implicated herein. Is it feasible for you, honorable members, Mr. Speaker, sir, to suspend and close your eyes and be and act blind with tremendous respect to the provisions of standing order number 98-3C? His Excellency the Governor will beg the floor on a preliminary nature by virtue of rule 13 he will move this honorable house mr speaker sir to request and urge you to make a ruling on rule 13 and rule 13 of your standing rules in part one of the fifth schedule permit you to grant half an hour for the adjudication of the preliminary objection honorable members the issue will be now if you are not satisfied if you see no statement from the speaker of the county assembly that there was indeed compliance with the preliminaries of the purported impeachment unfortunately with tremendous respect honorable members you have to down your tools and this is expressed in section 15 of the impeachment bill 2018 it has passed from you although it is pending before the national assembly for persuasion and then his excellency will demonstrate and he will show your honorable members mr speaker sir that an issue that is pending before the court that is alive freezes whatever actions that are therein contained and the pending impeachment motion that was originally filed on the 20th of february 2020 by the named third witness honorable peter Imotok, his excellency the governor will demonstrate has never been withdrawn by operation of the standing orders of the Nairobi city county assembly therefore his excellency the governor is saying he has been subjected to an unfair process that which violates article 47 one of our constitution can never be validated retrospectively introspectively or otherwise howsoever it cannot it is dead on arrival honorable members of this house let me rehash that on the 24th of september this year that the 
high court intervened in a very crucial aspect of the existence of this house in the life of your tenure. When this honorable house, as well as the National Assembly, were threatened with, should I say, the truncation of its current term, the High Court intervened in deference to that decision, honorable members. We are gathered here before you, and honorable members, in 2013 as well. Mr. Speaker, sir, you did ask the Supreme Court to assert the authority of this house by judicial intervention. And it was indeed declared that this honorable house has that authority that cannot be whittled down. It cannot be otherwise compromised by any writ or any action or even judicial ingenuity. Honorable members, His Excellency the Governor therefore implores and urges you that as we delve into you, give him the opportunity in furtherance of Rule 13 to demonstrate to you that the issues of his alleged commission of national crimes purported in the accusation number one, I, that he is not able to address the same matter sub judice. The issue of the alleged non-funding of NMS, His Excellency the Governor, is not able to address on you. He defers to you as standing order number 983C because the High Court in petition E348 of 2020 Nairobi City County Government versus NMS, His Excellency. Sorry, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, sir. His Lordship, Mr. Honorable Justice Marima, has stayed the operations of that act. Under which, Honorable Members, the NMS has been claiming funds. How is it then His Excellency can be accused of failing to release funds to the NMS, in all fairness, honorable members. You will see, therefore, that those charges, 90% of which relate to court proceedings, cannot be incised, removed from, or otherwise extricated from the last paragraph four allegations. Honorable members, inevitably, in the end, we have to assess the application of the Rule 19 of this Honorable House Standing Orders to the Fifth Schedule, Part 1. Honorable Members, so that I yield the last 15 to Mr. Nyamu, my learned friend, I will yield to him so that he can demonstrate to you that what is masked in the position of His Excellency the Governor, what is masked as an impeachment process, it is a witch hunt. For what? Because His Excellency the Governor has insisted being a stickler to the law, just as he is before you. They received the preliminary objection. They know they never filed any evidence. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, they filed nothing before the assembly because nothing was tendered before you on the 4th of December. Honorable members, you would have scrutinized that by now. You would have known by now. You would have seen and answered by now. You would even have, in minuscule way, your honorable members, Mr. Speaker, sir, seen the veracity of the seed alleged evidence. Mr. Speaker, sir, there is one very fundamental aspect. If a man should be denied audience, if a man or a woman should be denied audience when they are faced with accusations and then sentence is passed against them, is that not in violation of your standing order number 75? That every person should be given a hearing even the own county assembly own standing orders 
His Excellency the Governor wants to show you in Standing Order Number 721A, there was no compliance. And if a man or a woman should be told, I'm charging you with this, but with no evidence, no court of law would convict them. Mr. Speaker, sir, I therefore urge you to allow us, as His Excellency the Governor is beseeching you, beseeching you, honorable members, that if a matter pending before court, even the county assembly lawyers will be aware to confirm. It is before the Honorable Justice Ndoma Derry today at 3 p.m. for a ruling. It's a live proceeding. Does it mean the threshold of standing order number 98? 3C? It does. It does. What do we do in the circumstances? We have to yield and yield, Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable members, to the standing orders. They advise us. They map the way forward. They are the beacon light telling us we must stay this hearing. I yield to Mr. Nyamu to conclude the opening remarks for His Excellency the Governor. In which event, the last minute, Mr. Speaker, sir, I will come back to request for my application to be considered. Thank you. May it please the Honorable Senate, as we yes. as the Senate convenes here for purposes of considering the motion brought by the, assembly, the County Assembly of, of Nairobi City County. It is mandated to perform a quasi-judicial role as opposed to a legislative role. This is because these proceedings are proceedings that relate to a matter that may affect the fundamental rights and freedoms of an individual as envisaged under Article 47, 2 of the Constitution. And we'll be urging this honorable uh, Senate to assume the role of an adjudicatory body when dealing with this matter. to have at the back of its mind that it is being asked to interfere with the fundamental rights of the governor of Nairobi, Honorable Mike Buvisonko, under Article 38.3 of the Constitution, which is the right to be a candidate for public office and if elected to hold office. It is also being requested to interfere and interrogate a situation as to whether it would interfere with the democratic rights and principles of the citizens of Kenya and more specifically the residents of Nairobi 800,000 of whom elected Mike Bubi Sonko as governor for Nairobi. Honorable members of the Senate, in these particular proceedings, we shall be urging the House to consider that removal proceedings are initiated at the county assembly and concluded at the Senate. And in that sense, it will not be tenable 
and would ask the court to find so, I mean, the, 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 this house to find so, that anything that was not initiated at the assembly would be introduced in this honorable house. We shall be making reference to the letter of invitation that was served upon the governor, which letter referred to particulars and evidence as forwarded to the speaker of this house by the speaker of the county assembly. And it is on the basis of that invitation and the documents that were, five, that were served upon the governor by the clerk of this horrible house that a response was prepared. Mr. Speaker and the members of the house, we shall be requesting that this house bears in mind the provisions of Article 50, sub-Article 2 of the Constitution, where it is provided that an accused person shall have the right to be informed of the charges with sufficient detail to answer to the same, and to have adequate time and opportunity to prepare response. In this particular case, as at the time of invitation, and as at, as at the time at the governor was required to respond, the only material that he had was the notice of motion. And the documents that are listed in our response. Yesterday evening, after having filed the response, we collected a bundle of documents that had been introduced, which included a written statement by the mover of the motion, which had been amended, which, is, which was tantamount to amending the motion as the same had annexed us. It goes without saying that by the time the move of the motion was initiating that motion, he had these documents. He had these documents, and for that matter, he ought to have relied on them at the county assembly. As I finish, I would ask this House to strictly consider the standing orders of the county assembly as referred to in the section 14 of the county government's act where that particular assembly has to be guided by its guided and bound by its standing orders and that's how standing order number 72 73 and 67 come about where the procedure and the documents that ought to have been, the evidence, which provide that evidence ought to have been provided at the inception of the motion. We shall be urging this honorable house not to allow any additional documents and the, the same would be tantamount to the amendment of the motion, in which case this particular house would have no jurisdiction over. On matters procurement, as I finish, I wish to state that procurement, matters of procurement, the county assembly shall be called upon to, to demonstrate nexus between what happened in procurement and the governor, as a governor and an accounting officer. At this point, I would be urging my learned friend, uh, Mr. Ondieki, to conclude. Honorable members. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Honorable members of the Senate, this is the biggest court in the Commonwealth. Because today, as you sit, 
you see it as the biggest court, which will perform a, a, a judicial function, which means procedure is critical and very important. I wish to urge you that the, the Senate has protected devolution. The Senate has provided leadership. The Senate has protected democracy. So we urge this Senate, as you see as the high court, as, as a Supreme Court, to ensure that the procedure, the legal procedure, because the counter assembly is bound by Article 10, it is also bound by Article 47, that the procedure must be law. This, I also wish to submit that there is no proper notice of motion before the Senate that it will warrant an inquiry for impeachment because the county assembly frauded all their rules. They frauded all their standing orders. They frauded the constitution. And that is where we are saying the Senate as the protector, promoter, and the defender of democracy, defender of the rule of law, defender of constitutionalism, must stop this on the tracks. Let this motion go back to the county assembly. Once it is properly formulated, and it follows the procedure, then it can land back to your desk. Yes. Uh, I do not want to repeat, but I also wish to submit that the doctrine of separation of powers is very clear. So if the courts are inquiring, and the courts are independent institutions, competent to inquire, then it is only fair and just within the context of order number 98 of the Senate standing orders, that there are active cases that are going on in the High Court and the Lower Court. It's only fair and just that this is allowed to be concluded, then these matters can be properly addressed, depending on the outcome of those proceedings. Uh, the Honorable Senators, I wish to take you to Pontius Pirate. When he went to sleep at night with his wife, the wife told him that he, that man is innocent. So the following day, he had a chance to release one person. There were two people, Barnabas and Jesus. So when he said, whom do you want me to release? The people shouted, Barnabas. But you all know your lordships here in the Senate, that the Barnabas was not the innocent person. The innocent person was convicted. With those few remarks, I urge you to protect the rule of law and the constitutionalism. <laughs> OK. Honorable Senators, having listened to the opening statements, this is what I want to say, that in the course of their opening statements, both county assembly and the governor have made certain applications. In respect of the county assembly, an application has been made requesting the Senate to issue summons for 11 named individuals to appear before the Senate. That application was made via a letter dated 14th December 2020, but which could only be canvassed in the first instance before the Senate after the commencement of the hearing today. The letter is in issue appears at serial number eight in the documents before the Senate. On behalf of the governor, an objection has been raised among other things, on a preliminary basis, that certain requirements precedent to the process of impeachment at the county assembly were not met, and that the, um, the, paramount, uh, that the rule of, uh, nine, nine, of uh, 19 of part of the fifth schedule of the standing orders bars us from proceeding. Honorable Senators, Rule 29 of the Rules of Procedure for this hearing in plenary provides as follows. And I quote, where on a particular question or matter, including but not limited to questions of evidence, materiality, relevance, competence, or admissibility of evidence, and any questions consequential or incidental thereto, no provision has been made in the standing orders or in these rules. The Speaker of the Senate shall rule on the question or matter, and the ruling of the Speaker shall be final. Honorable Senators, pursuant to
to start to rule number 29, I will make my determination on the applications made when the Senate resumes after the lunch break. The Senate now stands adjourned until 2.15 p.m. today. Senate Speaker Kenneth Makelo Lusaka, they are giving uh, directions or the trajectory uh, that the special sitting will take after he has adjourned it till 2.15 p.m. Remember, it's Sonko's day where he's facing all the senators uh, to answer to some of the charges uh, that have been leveled against him, include gross misconduct, abuse of office, and uh, gross violation of the Constitution. Earlier on, his council, led by Harry Kinyanjui, uh, were representing Sonko, and actually they had filed a case in court trying to stop the special sitting from uh, grilling Mike Sonko. But Justice Ndumanderi is expected to make a ruling by around 3 p.m. So they will coincide both the sitting and the court, and of course we will update you and we'll be covering the event live beginning to 15 p.m.